What's up guys, Douglas from DougsterBob.com here and today we're taking a look at the 2022 Sunday Street Sweeper. This is Jake Seeley's signature bike, it costs $800 and it looks pretty sick. If you guys want a girlfriend, like all you have to do is spend $800 on this bike, say hey baby I bought you a bike and she'll fall in love with you, it's that simple. <laughs> All right, so the 2022 Sunday Street Sweeper, Jake Seeley's signature model, comes in one really rad pink and purple color. It's not my colorway, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that love it. It's funky, just like the 2021 model. It's, it's an oddball there. It comes in a left-hand drive and a right-hand drive. It weighs less than 25 pounds, and it scored pretty well in the street section on the Dugster Bob score. So let's talk about it. Like I said, this bike is $799. I saw it in stock on Dan's comp. One thing that's really cool is that um, there's two different options there. When you go to the Street Sweeper or you search Street Sweeper, is the left-hand drive or the right-hand drive, so there's no confusion as to which bike you're gonna end up getting. Now, one of the most important things to talk about here is the quality of this bike. The frame is full 100% aftermarket chromoly. So this is the same Jake Seeley frame, the same street sweeper frame that you would buy if you were just buying the frame. It is on this complete bike and I think that's amazing. Now the bars are four piece, 100% chromoly and the forks are also 100% chromoly. None of that chromoly steer tube nonsense. They're full chromoly and the offset is 25 millimeters on the forks, which I think is cool. Um, usually if they don't specify an offset, they're closer to 32 millimeters. That's a pro tip for you while you're doing your research. So like the Sunday Blueprint doesn't specify, chances are it's gonna be a 32. Um, we'll talk about geometry in a bit, but these 25 millimeter offset forks are gonna make the bike a little bit more responsive and a little bit more snappy than the 32 millimeter counterpart. Uh, there was one really important thing I wanted to say about the bike and I can't really remember. Oh, oh, it's a free coaster, comes with a free coaster and it does come with one plastic hub guard on the non-drive side. Um, so I think they heard me complain about no hub guards on the last bike and they said, you know what, we'll put one hub guard on here to make him happy. So I'm a little bit happier, but not much, honestly. I mentioned already that it weighs 24.7 something pounds. It's almost 25 pounds. And it's really hard to find a stock bike that comes in under 25 pounds. I remember back in my day when we were riding, we would do the craziest things to cut weight. And my goal was always 25 pounds. Like my bike was probably 28, 29, which sounds light to some of you guys who had the 40 pound bikes. But I always wanted to get it down to 25 pounds. And if you just buy the Street Sweeper, you're getting a bike with 25 pounds. You don't have to drill holes in your seat tube or anything. How crazy, right? Um, the rims are double wall and that's really it on the quality. Everything about this bike is incredible. Uh, they could have added aftermarket chromoly forks and bars to just step it up a little bit. However, the aftermarket frame is a really nice touch because they spend extra detail and just like extra attention to detail on those aftermarket frames and it's gonna make it a much better bike. For the geometry, this is a pretty responsive bike. It comes in a 20.75 inch top tube. And like I always say, please check the Dugster Bob size guide. Do not get the wrong size top tube. You can have the best quality bike, but if it's too big or too small for you, you're gonna suck. It's just how it goes. And just, just make sure you get the right size. Please, 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 please. Other than that, the chainstay is a really important factor. It's 12.7 to 13 inches. So depending on if you have your wheel slammed, it's gonna be 12.7. If you have your wheel pulled all the way back, it's gonna be about 13. This is a responsive chainstay. It's gonna make picking up manuals easier, but looping out is also gonna be easier. It's gonna feel really responsive and really twitchy, but not necessarily so stabled and controlled. So if you're more of a technical rider, I like to compare Gary Young versus Garrett Reynolds. Garrett Reynolds is riding something like a really short chainstay like this one. Gary Young's riding something like a 13.3 or a bigger chainstay. And you can tell by their styles how different they are. That's kind of the riding. This chainstay is geared more towards Garrett Reynolds type riding than Gary Young riding. The head tube angle is 75.25. So a 0.25 of a degree steeper than normal. This combined with the 25 millimeter offset forks are going to, it's, it's just gonna feel a little extra snappy. Even though it's only a quarter of a degree, 
you're still going to feel it uh, in the front end when you're doing cornering or popping into nose manuals it's going to twitch really fast and i love this feeling but it can be too much for some people to handle i'm trying to think oh the standover height is 8.85 uh, which is pretty close to nine it's a little bit lower than most um, which is going to make it a little harder to pinch for bar spins or grab the seat for toboggans but it's not the end of the world and it's really not enough to make a huge difference all right, and the coolest part of the review is the Dugster Bob scores, where we look at the bike and how it ranks in different disciplines. So this is a scoring system that I made up to rank every single BMX bike on how good it is for street, park, dirt, and how good the quality is. We're gonna look at the street sweeper, but if you want this master spreadsheet, you wanna look at all the bikes yourself, there's like 80 plus bikes on there, you can click the link in the description, get the Dugster Bob score sheet, and click it, and put in your email address, you'll get it sent to you so that you can compare every single bike and sort it by discipline, by price, however you wanna do that. In the street section, the street sweeper scored a 6.75. We're gonna go ahead and round that up to a seven. Now, so far, this bike has scored the highest in street than any of the other Sunday bikes, um, cheaper than it. So the reason for this score increase is one, the free coaster, that's good, and then the extra quality. So you want really good quality when you're riding street because imagine jumping down a 10 stair and having your frame snap in half. No bueno, right? You don't want that to happen. So it is really important to have high quality stuff to withstand big drops and big gaps. This comes with the free coaster and it comes with one hub guard. And so, you know, that makes it a teeny tiny bit towards street. Obviously, if it had four pegs and four hub guards, it would score a lot higher, but it doesn't. Seven is still really good and pretty impressive. Now in the park section, this bike actually scored a 5.67, which we're gonna round up to six. That's again, that's really impressive because this doesn't seem like a park specific bike. And it puts it actually with a street and a park bike on the higher end of things. Um, you can ride street on this, you can ride park on this. It does not come with a gyro, but you could put a gyro on it if you want to. The reason for the 5.67 score is because of how responsive the geometry is. That shorter chain stay, that lower standover, that little bit steeper head tube angle is gonna make it really good for responsive technical park riding, even though it's kind of a street bike. So that's cool. You can get this and, and it'll be really easy to upgrade it for street with pegs and hub, hub guards or upgrade it for park and make it a little more park specific. In the dirt section though, it scored a two. Two, that's it, just a two. This bike is not dirt specific at all, mostly because of the really responsive frame, the responsive geometry. You're gonna have a hard time controlling it on dirt, especially if you're going high and fast. It's just gonna wanna twitch too much and it's so hard to control, let me tell you. It also has the free coaster, which is a huge disadvantage when riding dirt. Um, imagine you case a dirt jump, lose all your speed, and can't get over the second dirt jump. That's that's disastrous, right? So you're gonna wanna pedal to, to make up that speed and to clear the jump. But you can't really do that on the free coaster. I mean, of course you can pedal, but that slack is gonna go in, it's gonna take time to engage, and it's just not gonna be a very fun process. So I would not recommend riding dirt on this bike, but everything else is pretty solid. In the quality section, it scored a seven. Uh, very impressive quality, that's because of the aftermarket frame. It's really important to get aftermarket stuff because they put an extra amount of attention to detail and just a little extra love into the parts. They pay a lot more attention to it, it's less mass produced and it's just higher quality overall. So that's amazing. The wall rims, amazing. Cromali forks, Cromali bars, amazing. Uh, and a good amount of aftermarket parts. So this is a really high quality bike. $800 is a lot of money though. So we'll talk about that next is like, who is it for and would I recommend it? But first we need to talk about some potential issues that I see with this bike. And the only potential issue I see is getting made fun of at the skate park maybe. For some reason, people are still haters of like boys riding pink or wearing purple or whatever. And you know, if you're buying this for your kid, granted it's probably like your kid's gonna be too small for it in the first place. But if you're buying this for your kid 
you you might be setting him up for failure if he's a guy i guess assuming he's a guy and not a girl i support buying it for your girl kid too like don't get me wrong but assuming it's a guy you put him on this bike you take him to the skate park you might be setting him up for some some teasing and stuff like that that's the only potential issue i see i think it's dope uh, i would definitely compliment it and i love the bike but that's the only issue i see who is the sunday street sweeper for This is going to be for somebody who is not new to the sport, somebody who's been riding for a long time and probably been riding at a mid-level. I'd say you could reach, this to me is a high-level bike, and I'd say you could reach a high level, level of riding in two years with a lot of dedication. So if you've already been riding for about one year and you've got, you're getting your bars down, you're getting your whips down, you're getting your feeble threes down, feeble 180s, ice picks, grinding handrails, things like that down, then you're probably ready to step up to a bike like this. This is one of the few bikes that you could buy and it would potentially last you another couple years while riding at a high level. Any other bike on a high level, it's gonna break really fast. If you got the Sunday Forecaster and you're riding at a high level, it's not gonna last very long. This bike can withstand that kind of riding. So I'd say you're a, you're a mid to high level rider, you need an upgraded bike with good amounts of quality because you're progressing at a pretty fast rate. You're going to have to have a lot of money. You're going to have to have like 800 bucks set aside. I'd say 900 by the time you pay for shipping and and some, some small swag upgrades if you want. 900 bucks and you're really dedicated to the sport. If you're riding and you're like, uh, I might like get a girlfriend and quit riding or I might buy a car and sell my bike to buy a new engine, I don't know, then probably don't buy this bike because it sounds like you're not very dedicated and buying a bike this expensive at this level level of quality if you're not really all in on the sport is a waste of money and a waste of time. So make sure you're committed to it. But yeah, that's who it's for. Someone that fits on a 20.75 inch bike, riding at a mid to high level quality, $800 in the bank, and very dedicated to riding with dreams of becoming a pro one day. Would I recommend this bike? And the answer is yes. If it's the right size for you and you have the money for it, this is a really good bike. $800 is a lot of money. It puts it a little more expensive than the Kink Williams last year, but it's a great bike and you can't get much better for this price to be completely honest actually now that i think about it if you you'd have to spend another 300 dollars to get anything close and that'd be the sound wave the sound wave is incredible but that's a lot of extra money to spend so for this price this is a really good bike really good option and i definitely definitely recommend it now i need you to go in the comments and let me know i have a serious question do you think they should have gave it one more color option do you think it's too like bold to do the pink and the purple should they have done pink and purple and then maybe just a black or like a cream color what do you think let me know i'm really curious and if you decide to buy this bike i need you to click the link in the description go over and buy it the link is going to send you to wherever Whichever place has it priced the best. I've seen some shops charging way more than they should for these bikes, and I don't want you to end up doing that. So click the link in the description, see where it takes you. It's probably going to be Dan's comp, and um, you know, check that out. If you're still unsure about which bike is right for you, go in the description again. I have a free BMX bike recommendation. Click that. All you have to do is fill it out. Tell me your height, your skill level, your budget, what type of riding you like to do. I'll look over all that information and I'll make a PDF and send it to you. It's going to have three bikes that I think are perfect for you. So that way you can save the headache of looking at millions of YouTube videos and you can get the bike that's right for you. um, Recommended by me. What a deal. (laughs) And the last thing here, I really hope you get a bike soon and I hope you get into the sport. Good luck with your shopping. Let me know how your experience has been so far. I can't wait to help you become a better bike rider. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Peace.